should do as your master says. Destroy it. There is a dark Ahsoka scenario that could explain Sabine's betrayal of Ahsoka on Cedos. The relationship between Ahsoka Tano and Sabine Wren was tense in the early episodes of Ahsoka. But in the end, they put aside their differences for the benefit of the galaxy, as any master and apprentice team must, and cooperated to try and prevent Knight's sister Morgan Elspeth and her mercenaries from discovering the map to Paradia, which held the key to finding Grand Admiral Thrawn, and consequently, the Jedi Ezra Bridger. If only Sabin hadn't been overcome by her sadness and optimism, and Balin's skull hadn't defeated Ahsoka in a lightsaber battle, the two would have also been very near to success. Sabine was faced with a tough decision following Ahsoka's death, either destroy the map and lose Ezra for good, or follow her master's orders and stop Thrawn from coming back once and for all. However, because she was still a novice Jedi, Sabine allowed her feelings to control her letting the possibility of seeing her buddy again after everything she had lost override her better sense. Ultimately, Ezra returned home. But Grand Admiral Thrawn also did, and Ahsoka and Sabin remained stranded in the parallel galaxy of Star Wars. However, it's probable that more darker things were going on. Perhaps someone outside of Sabin had influenced her feelings. In Part 1, Master and Apprentice, the opening episode of Ahsoka, Sabin awakens from a dream with voices in her head. Ezra Bridger's voice is clearly one of the voices. Not surprisingly, given his abrupt and dramatic exit in the Star Wars Rebels series finale, Sabin would continue to dream of him years later. Though it was brief, her Jedi training with Ahsoka made those voices much more significant. It was almost as if Ezra was pleading with Sabin to locate and return home with him via the Force. It is not unheard of for people to call out to one another through the Force, and even though Sabin had not yet reached her full potential, anything was possible. However, if Ezra had established a connection with Sabin via the Force, it would be reasonable to assume that he would have detected her presence upon her arrival on Peridia. Clearly though, he hadn't. Not only was he shocked by her looks, but he was also ignorant of her status as a Jedi apprentice, even though he was overjoyed to see her and incredibly appreciative that she had come to find him. Which raises the question, if Ezra wasn't attempting to communicate with her, then whence did those sounds originate? The Great Mothers? three extraordinarily strong Nightsister witches who were assisting Thrawn in organizing his escape from the secondary galaxy of Star Wars were first shown by Ahsoka. Ahsoka hinted that even though the Nightsisters were in different galaxies, they could still converse with one another by whispering directions into Lady Morgan Elspeth's ear. Therefore, it is conceivable that the Great Mothers also recognized Sabine's bond with Ezra. Maybe they played on her emotions as a sort of insurance policy. Ezra was depending on Sabine to locate him since, despite her strength, she has a deep affection for her friends and family. It makes sense that in her desperation, she would go to tremendous lengths to find him, even if it meant breaking Ahsoka's trust, especially if someone was pushing her to do so. It's possible that the Great Mothers did more for Sabine than merely allow her to hear Ezra's voice beckoning her nightmares. They might have urged her to return the map to Balin when it counted most. When Sabine was perched on a precipice, and thought Ahsoka was gone, and there was no other option. Connected to Peridia, the planet Cedos marks the beginning of the dangerous hyperspace voyage between two galaxies. There, Sabin might have been under the greater influence of the Great Mothers, who could have taken advantage of her vulnerable emotional state.